Hey guys and welcome back to another video. In this video I will be making some homemade butter and I decided why not test it out on a fresh sourdough loaf. So in the beginning of this video I'm just making my sourdough. If you guys want a full tutorial I do have one up on my channel. I'll link it in the description. Thanks so much for being here and enjoy the video. Bye! upstate New York. It is very difficult to find raw milk or at least like advertised. I think they can sell at like farms but to sell commercially you need a license um, and so there's this guy that's like 35 minutes away from where I live that I think is like grandfathered in and he has a license so I really wanted to go there specifically to get some raw milk so I'm really excited about that. I used to live in New Hampshire and I was able to just go to the store and get raw milk so I really missed it. Cause it's just, it's just so much, I know there's controversy around it, okay? But honestly, it is just so much better for you um, than pasteurized milk. So much more digestible. There's so much more nu nutrients in it that you lose when you pasteurize. So really excited about that. Um, we just got a dozen farm eggs. And then the same place makes their own homemade um, yogurt. So this is cinnamon and maple Greek yogurt um, ingredients. Pasteurized whole milk, pure maple syrup, cinnamon, and cultures. No artificial ingredients, no preservatives, no RBST used on their cows. So just happy to support, you know, a local small business. We got, they also carry a bunch of local vendors. So we got these um, all natural dog treats for my little, my little Daisy. She already had one, she loved it. Um, got my dad some lemon glazed cookies. And then the star of the show for this video is we got a quart of heavy cream from also a local uh, creamery, um, Bat and Kill. Uh, they make really good chocolate milk too. So this is the start of the show. We're gonna be using the whole quart to make some butter. Um, this is gonna be the first time I'm making butter, but figured, you know, start to get my practice in for when I decide to get my own place with my own dairy cow or maybe a dairy sheep, I don't know. So, you know, we're just gonna try it. And then um, we're gonna heat up the bread. I'm going to show you guys a trick um, to re, you know, reinvigorate your bread, to re-crisp it up, to make it feel fresh again. So yeah, just follow along. We're going to start making some butter. All right. So first thing is we are going to attach our whisk attachment to the KitchenAid. This, by the way, was a um, Facebook Marketplace find, I didn't want to spend the insane amount of money it is for a KitchenAid and I got this off of Facebook Marketplace, I don't know, I think it was like 150 bucks maybe, um, and it works like a charm, so check Facebook Marketplace if you don't want to 
invest the money in a brand new KitchenAid, just check out your local Facebook market. So anyway, so I mean, we're just gonna go in with this whole quart of um, cream. We'll see how much butter we get. Head down. And we're just gonna start, um, basically you're gonna start making whipped cream, okay? So, just gonna. I don't know, I just wanted it to go faster. I had to put a towel over it. Um, this is what I've seen most people do. If you're doing it with a KitchenAid, put a towel over it so you're not getting a bunch of cream everywhere. Now we're really at whipped cream, guys. So, we're gonna keep going. I have to say, I don't know how they discovered this, like, back in the day. Because, I mean, it's just like, it's taking a while on the KitchenAid mixer. Imagine doing this by hand and getting to the point where it's like, oh, heavy cream separates into buttermilk and butter, and this butter's delicious. Like, I don't know, but it's starting to, it's starting to get a little bit more buttery. So let me go show you guys. This is like the most satisfying thing to watch. Um, I mean, so far, I would say go out and get some heavy cream and try this. Like, it might not be super cost effective, but it's just like a fun project so far. And it's getting to the point where it's um, about to separate into the mil buttermilk and the butter. So um, it's gonna get really messy. Um, so I'll probably have to stop it to show you guys instead of like unveiling it and getting um, buttermilk all over my camera. But I'll keep you guys updated. So here guys, you can see just like how the color has changed and you can see like all the buttermilk dripping off. So I'm gonna let it keep going for a little bit um, just so that it, you know, gets a little bit more cohesive in there. And I wanted to give the motor a rest too because this does take a long time and you know, your motor gets warm. So I'm giving the motor a little bit of a break, but this is so satisfying. You can see how it's getting golden and everything. So. Um, really satisfying. And there you have it. We have butter. Oh my gosh. Guys, I am so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, let's move on to the next step. All right, you guys. So I have my bowl of um, butter and buttermilk. So the next step is to strain your um, butter from your buttermilk. I'm gonna strain it into a bowl because I want to save my buttermilk. Because you can use it for a bunch of things. So there's all the butter. The next step you're gonna wanna do is run your butter under cold, cold water um, and press it out. You wanna press as much buttermilk out as possible so that your butter stays for longer. It'll go rancid more quickly if you don't do this step. put my buttermilk into a mason jar. Whoa. Wow, just fit. 
Um, and I'm gonna try like a little sip, so let's see. Yeah, t it tastes like milk, honestly, like thinner, thinner milk, so it's good, but it's good for like soaking um, chicken to make it tender. Um, you can leave it cultured or, or uncultured or cultured. So like your buttermilk at the grocery store is a lot thicker because it's cultured. So you just, I think, leave it out on the counter for overnight, but I'm gonna have to look that up. So um, look it up yourself because I don't want to ruin your buttermilk for you. I have pressed my butter into this dish. I mean, it made like a very good amount of butter. Um, and so for my taste test, I am going to try it with some of the sourdough I made yesterday. So I just wanted to show you guys a little trick. When you have a loaf that, you know, I mean, it's fresh. I made it yesterday, but it doesn't have that crisp that you want. Preheat your oven to 350. Run this under some cold water. I know it sounds weird maybe if you haven't done this before. Run it under cold water. Put it on the center rack just by itself in your oven for five to seven minutes and you will get a nice, fresh, warm, crispy loaf again. So I lied. Um, maybe do like about 10 to 15 minutes on this, but I'm so excited. This is a bread knife I got for Christmas, by the way. Um, it's super cheap. I'll link it below. It's super cheap and it works great. So I'm just gonna slice a heel. See how that just cut through so well? Anyway, here's my loaf. I'm gonna get a butter knife. You know, I really gotta get a lot of butter on here to, to get the right taste for you, for you guys, so don't um, judge me for the amount of butter I use. It's so good, honestly, like, there's probably the fact that I made it myself. There's something really satisfying about that, but it is crazy how, like, the butter process. It's just really crazy and really cool. Um, I would encourage you guys to do it. It's really fun. I used a quart, and I got a good amount of butter. I mean, look at that. We use a lot of butter in this house, so, yeah. Awesome, super good, would highly recommend. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you've made it this far, you know, why not subscribe? We're gonna be doing some fun things on this channel. You know, you don't have to have your own dairy cows. You don't have to have your own homestead to start being, you know, a little bit more homemaker-ish, if that's what you wish. And that's what we're practicing for because one day I will love my own dairy cow. So thanks for watching, bye.